a 150% rise in the Chinese government's persecution of Christians in just one year. We don't carry arms. We will not carry arms. We don't teach carrying arms. But we can call on God. Our God is bigger than human ammunition. Hey everybody, welcome back to The Fifth Seal, Episode 9. I am your host, The Evangelical Norm. Uh, The Fifth Seal is a podcast to bring awareness to the persecuted church around the world, uh, and we count down the top countries on Open Doors USA's World Watch List, which is why the episode numbers go backwards. Yesterday was 10, today's 9, tomorrow's 8, and so on. So, uh, I started this uh, uh, 10 years ago, uh, uh, decided that November should be Persecuted Church Awareness Month, and began counting down those countries um, throughout the month of November. Every day through November, we do an episode, talk about persecution around the world, and count down our countries on the world watch list. Later, expanded that to throughout the year. So from January to October, we count down from 50 to 31. And then in the month of November, we count down from 30 to number one, those countries on Open Doors USA's world watch list. So all that being said, just a little background on the podcast for those who might be new and just now joining us. But all that being said, it is Sunday, November 22nd, and this is our update on the persecuted church around the world. This from persecution.org. The recent arrests of multiple human rights activists associated with the Egyptian Initiative for Personal Rights, combined with an increase of blasphemy charges against Christians, shows the worsening state of free speech in Egypt. When there is no free speech nor freedom of conscience, then the ability to pursue human rights activism is severely impacted. ICC is currently aware of five blasphemy cases impacting Coptic Christians since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. While details differ, these cases all have a social media component which was used to justify a blasphemy prosecution. Egypt closely monitors and restricts social media as part of their limitations on free speech. As a human rights organization, EIPR has documented a number of different issues in Egypt, including blasphemy, free speech, and other religious freedom issues. By by arresting multiple EIPR staff members, Egypt is sending a clear message to all human rights activists that protecting the vulnerable and defending the wrongly accused is something which will be punished. So here we have this situation where we know that our Coptic brothers and sisters in Egypt are, are constantly accused of blasphemy and so on. Now, even those who try to stand up for the rights of Christians in this country are being arrested and persecuted. And again, just like the article says, Egypt is sending a very clear message that we are going to persecute Christians who uh, who push back against Islam and blaspheme, quote unquote, blaspheme the prophet and Allah. And then not only are we going to, to persecute them, but if you defend them, you also will be persecuted. This is what happens when not only do you have the religion that is is persecuting, but the government that backs that religion that persecutes Christians. So please keep praying for our brothers and sisters in Egypt. This also from persecution.org. A joint prayer network in Beijing has been disbanded by the local government. Many pastors within the network were summoned and asked to shut down their churches. The Beijing Ministerial Joint Prayer Network was founded in 2004 by Pastor Jin Mingri from one of the largest house churches in Beijing, Xiaowang Church. He has gathered dozens of pastors to regularly pray for church revival and missions. While it started in Beijing, there are now pastors from different provinces who are actively involved in BMJPN. Recently, the authorities have summoned many pastors who are part of BMJPN to local religious affairs bureau to receive interrogation. They informed the pastors that BMJPN has not registered with the government, so its activities are considered, quote, illegal religious activities, unquote. They should be banned from preaching online, and they were asked to dismiss their churches. A pastor told Gospel Herald of Hong Kong that he will not dismiss the BMJPN. He is also prepared to see churches forcibly shut down by the authorities. Many churches have been gathering in smaller groups these days, both due to the pandemic and the increased crackdown. During the pandemic, China has further tightened its grip on house churches, 
It's first use uh, it first used the excuse of COVID-19 to stop in-person gathering. Now not only does it pressure the church to stay closed, it also starts to clamp down on online service and gathering, such as the prayer meetings held by BMJPN. Uh, again, another great example of persecution by the government, where the government is the one that steps in and says, you cannot have your church services, you cannot do these things, this is what, what is going to happen. And so it's not a, a fundamentalist religious group, extremist, or anything like that. It is literally they are fighting against the government in order to exercise their religious freedom. So pray for our brothers and sisters in China. And that brings us to our world watch list for today. Number nine, Iran. So some facts about Iran. The region is the Middle East. Persecution type is Islamic oppression. Persecution level is extreme. The population of Iran is about 82,821,000, of which there are about 800,000 Christians. So less than 1% of the population of Iran is Christian. The main religion is Islam, the government is an Islamic Republic, and the leader is President Hassan Rouhani. Iranian society is governed by Islamic law, which means the rights of and professional responsibilities for Christians are heavily restricted. Christians are forbidden from sharing their faith with non-Christians in Iran, and it is illegal to produce Christian literature or hold services in Farsi, the most common language in Iran. Converts from Islam face persecution from the government. If Christians attend an underground house church, they face the constant threat of arrest. Believers in, from Muslim backgrounds usually keep their faith secret. Leaders of Christian convert, convert groups have been arrested, prosecuted, and have received a long prison sentence for, quote, crimes against national security, unquote. Secret house church, churches are monitored and frequently raided, and dozens of Christians are imprisoned in appalling conditions. Christians from Armenian to and Assyrian churches are allowed to practice their faith openly, but they still face discrimination, and it is illegal for them to share the gospel with Muslims. Over the 2020 World Watch List reporting period, there were at least 169 arrests of Christians, excuse me, 114 of them made in one single week, one single week at the end of 2018. Many Iranian believers, especially converts, have been prosecuted and sentenced to long terms in jail. Others are still awaiting trial. Their families face public humiliation during this time. Several house churches were raided in the World Watch List 2020 reporting period, most of which can no longer function as a meeting place for Christians. The practice of courts settling, setting very high bail amounts for detained Christians continues. Arrest, arrested believers who manage to raise such sums of money for conditional release on bail forfeit that money if they proceed to flee the country. There have been reports of, of the security services informing the parents of young women found attending house church services, stating that the women were found mixing with men inappropriately. Shaming unmarried women is an effective way to stain their reputation and harm their social status, especially in conservative areas. So some prayer points for Iran. Nearly all churches that held services in Farsi have been closed in recent years and their leaders arrested. Pray new leaders arrive and that believers stay strong in the community with one another. Pray for Christians in prison in Iran to be emboldened to share the gospel with the guards and fellow inmates. Shia Islam is the official religion and all laws must be consistent with the official interpretation of Sharia law. Any Muslim who leaves Islam faces the death penalty. Pray that laws change allowing for freedom of religion. For a Muslim family, it is a great disgrace when one of its members leaves Islam. Pray for Christians who have been cursed and disowned by their families for their faith. Let's pray. Father, again, we thank you so much that we have this time to come together to lift up our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted because of their faith in you. We praise you that you have provided us a medium where we can gather across great, great distances and even time as others may be watching this tomorrow, later today, but still joining their voices with us to pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted because of their faith in you, Lord. We lift up our brothers and sisters in Egypt who are continually being uh, accused and charged with, with blasphemy, their, their free speech is, is impeded, and their ability to worship you is, is crushed by the government there. Lord, we pray for those who would stand up for Christians who are now being uh, persecuted, arrested, and detained by the government. Lord, we pray that you would intervene in the Egyptian government and that you would provide the ability for our brothers and sisters there to worship you as, as your Bible, as your word uh, 
instructs them to, Lord. And so we, we lift that up. We also pray for our brothers and sisters in China, um, especially those involved in, in this joint prayer network. Lord, we pray that, that they would continue, that they would, uh, in, even in the face of the persecution that they, they, they are dealing with, Lord, that they would continue to pray together, to proclaim your gospel together, and that they would just glorify you in their willingness to continue to stand firm in their faith in the face of, of persecution, Lord. And so we pray for our brothers and sisters there in China. We pray for our brothers uh, and sisters in Iran as well, Lord, uh, as these churches that we're, we're teaching in Farsi are shut down. Lord, we pray that you would raise up more leaders who speak the, the language there and that would lead more and more house churches, that you would provide the community that is needed for those believers there to uh, to continue in, in discipleship relationships and that they can grow in maturity in their faith and, and, and grow in holiness and sanctification in you, Lord. We pray for those who are already imprisoned, God, that you would protect them physically, uh, protect their health, protect their 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 bodies, Lord, as as they're often beaten and and horribly mistreated while they're in prison. And Lord, we pray that you protect them spiritually, that they would continue to even be bold enough to share the gospel with their guards and their fellow inmates. We pray for um, the government there. We pray that the 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 um, we pray that the laws would change, that you would intercede, that Sharia law would lose its grip on the country, and that there would truly be a freedom of religion, that, that the believers in Iran would be able to practice their faith as well, Lord, as, as the Bible dictates that they would be able to. And we do pray for those who convert from Islam to Christianity. Um, we pray that for those who have been disowned by their families, have been ostracized by their communities, Lord. We pray that you would provide Christian communities to come around them, uh, to, to walk with them in discipleship, Lord, that they could grow and, and become stronger and stronger in their faith in you, Lord. And that in all of this, that you would receive the glory and that you would, you would use all these things to draw more and more people to yourself, Lord, that we would see more believers come in spite of the persecution um, and more believers willing to, to share the gospel and that you would receive the glory because it is for your glory and in your name that we pray, Jesus. Amen. Again, thank you guys so much for taking the time out to come and to, to join us as we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world. We have eight more days in November for Persecuted Church Awareness Month. We have eight more countries that we can count down. If you know anybody who might be willing to take 15 to 20 minutes out of their day to come and join us as we pray for them, invite them to come to the Fifth Seal Facebook page. Um, Tell them to hit the join button. I'll get them added as soon as we can. Uh, really quickly, usually as soon as I get the, the notification that someone's hit the join button, I can get them approved to be part of that group. Or they can go over to the Evangelical Norm on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, and you can get all the stuff, all the content that I release there beyond just the fifth seal, but other podcasts that are done there as well. Or if you don't have time to sit down and watch a, a 15 to 20 minute video, you can still get all of these episodes as audio podcasts wherever you get your audio. So Google Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, uh, Pandora, it, we are on all of those platforms. So wherever you get your audio uh, podcast, you can grab us, put us in your earbuds and join us in, in prayer for our brothers and sisters who are persecuted because of their faith in Jesus Christ. And as always, Preach the gospel at all times. Use words. They're necessary. And until tomorrow, Soli Deo Gloria.